there and welcome to my August 2023 reading blog. So far we are a few days into the month and I have already started a few books. I am currently reading The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway for my 100 epic reads of a lifetime poster and so far I'm not really enjoying it. I will talk more about that in the vlog itself which will be posted before this vlog comes out so stay tuned for that for my thoughts on that book. I have read a manga while I visited my friend in Ottawa. It's called Fire and His Fingertips. There's a longer subtitle and I don't know the author's name offhand. It was volume two. I read that and it wasn't as good as the first volume for me. Just once it starts getting into plot that doesn't really matter, conflict that doesn't really matter, when the point of the manga is to be explicit and 18 plus for a reason, it was just a little bit boring for me so I ended up giving it three stars. I am also listening to the audiobook of The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. She is an author who not just writes romance, she also wrote In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which was a college-themed thriller that I read previously, so I thought I'd check out this other thriller. I am not too far into it yet, but so far it's fine. It's getting into some weird, like sex cult stuff, so I understand it's not going to be for everybody. It's pretty dark, it's not what I usually read, but I'm not horrified by it yet or disturbed and I don't think I'm going to stop reading it. I am also reading a book called Electra by Jennifer Saint. She is someone who wrote about Greek myth before. She wrote a book called Ariadne, which I thought was a beautifully written retelling of Ariadne's story, that being with the Minotaur and eventually Dionysus. But so far this book is very unfocused. So it is based on three different characters' point of views, that being Clytemnestra, Cassandra and Electra, which is one of Clytemnestra's daughters. It's very, very muddy, and it's just doing a very generic retelling of the Trojan War, which um, there's no new ideas here. It is written very beautifully, and so far the only thing I like about it is that all of the characters, uh, the female characters so far, are incredibly sympathetic to Helen. The whole point of her story sometimes is to just say, this is the bad woman, every person in Greek myth hates her, so we're just gonna put all of our hate on her. So it's nice to see some people being nice to her, especially her sister. Her sister is almost every single time pitted against her and being like, she's the pretty one and I'm the bitch and I hate her because she's pretty. Clytemnestra in this is like, no, Helen gets these things and she gets abused often because she's pretty. Like, it's just something that I acknowledge and accept about her and she's nice to me and I like her, she's my sister. So, so far, very good, like, attitude towards Helen from all of the characters. It is just weird that this book is titled Electra, and Electra's point of view chapters are the shortest in the, the book so far. Nothing's about her so far. It's very just like, oh, I needed to pick some Greek myth character to do a retelling of, so I'll market it as Electra, even though it's about a couple characters. It's just a very odd choice, and I think that this is a bad sophomore uh, slump for Jennifer Saint because Ariadne was very well done. It was very focused. It had a very clear message. She obviously wanted to write this one, and the lecturer just seems like it was the publishers pushing her into the same sort of trend again and her sort of scrambling on what to do. So that is my month so far. I will keep you updated soon. Yeah, sorry. Alright, Ryan, what do you got? I'm gonna go for you. I don't know. Josh, what'd you put? Oh, you know what? I don't remember later, but I put Spain. Spain? Because I know the Spanish American War and like the
Hello, it's a new day, a new shift at work. I'm very busy at work this month, but I'm just here to say that I have finished The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead and I have finished Electra by Jennifer Saint. I am giving Electra by Jennifer Saint to stars because it just severely lacked focus and I think this could have been a really excellent House of Artreus uh, Trojan War retelling uh, through a woman's perspective um, and it just missed the mark. It could have been so good and I hope to find a retelling of that story that actually captures the just utter tragedy and the darkness and just the cool things that happen in that story. And The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, I got gave it three stars because it was fine. It happened. <laughs> I really don't have anything else to say about it. It just exists. And I haven't really thought about it since I finished it. It was just another audiobook for me to listen to. So that's all I have to say about it. The book that I am currently reading is called A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. It is a adult fantasy series about all these teenagers in a building. They call it a school, but there's no classes, there's no teachers, there's no adult supervision, there's just kids and creatures and the creatures are all trying to eat them and kill them because when they're like teenagers that they're apparently their most powerful and their most delicious. I don't know, this is so like early to mid 2000s edgy um essentially Harry Potter fan fiction and that has been confirmed to be Harry Potter fan fiction. It used to be Draco and Harry fan fiction and now that I know that it's impossible not to see it. Uh, but it's straight washed. Uh, the main female character um, she might as well just be spitting the word Potter given the amount of hatred she has for the main boy character is needless. There's no reasoning for it. Um, it really reads like a very very edgy fan fiction. The writing style is just very like paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of just explaining the world building when it is so much easier to show it, explain it sometimes, show it other times, have um, more nuanced explanation of your world. It's just so edgy teen, like I'm really getting Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way vibes from the main character. I'm also well aware of all the weird, like, racial aspects of this book, like seemingly making the main character biracial and not exploring that side of herself, as well as that paragraph about dreadlocks, which I can actually show since I have a picture of it. Yeah, rough stuff. Um, I'm almost done that. I've been reading it at work. And it's not going to get a good rating from me. I don't enjoy it, so... That's it for now. I'm really hoping I finish off the month with uh, something good. Like, please. <laughs>
I can't even really talk about it much because the entirety of this novel is the twist at the end and the twist was not well developed. Um, all the characters being insane and therefore red herrings doesn't work when every single character is just insane and unrealistic. And I just didn't care as soon as that twist was revealed. I thought it was stupid. Luckily, it was only like the last 10 pages that I had to slog through. The rest of it was a good buildup of a mystery, that being why did this woman kill her husband and then refuse to speak again? Interesting premise, but it was just a really shoddy execution. And I don't like this. I don't think I'm going to try reading this author again because I've already read his second novel, The Maidens, which was more, you know, my taste because it was set in university and stuff. But that completely missed the mark. I can't remember which video I talked about that, but I will try to add a note to see which video you should find. Anyway, that is it for this book. One star, big piece of poop, and I hated it. Um... Also, I don't know if I talked about a Deadly Education, but this gets two stars. I was very bored the entire time. And the only interesting thing about this book was the fact that it used to be fan fiction, written by someone who is one of the runners of Archive of Our Own. So mad respect to her for that, but I just did not dig this book at all. Hopefully I finish the month off with something good. to turn off my fan in my room and I am so sweaty so we're gonna do this very very quickly. Here we are at the wrap up. I read seven books this month as I typically do. First book that I read was The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway and I ended up giving that book one star because I did not enjoy the process of reading it and the fact that I had to look up what the purpose of the book was after reading it like I couldn't glean that on my own. It just meant that it was a very dull read. I didn't like it. I didn't care. And I just only read it for the poster. Like, it didn't resonate with me. So that was a huge disappointment. I then read volume two of Fire in His Fingertips by Kawano Tanishi, and I ended up giving that one three stars. The premise of that manga series is that this girl dates a firefighter that she knew in her past, and the first uh, manga was really really good because there was a lot of tension and there was a reason for like them to get together and for them to be doing the uh, smutty things that they were doing. But this second volume they're trying to develop their relationship and she's having insecurities about another woman. Boring stuff. Plus, this is just a very minor tidbit from me, they are deciding to do full on intercourse instead of the um, few things that they were doing getting to know each other which I find more appealing than just like eight scenes of them just doing missionary so that was really disappointing for me so it only got three stars from me this volume and I don't think I will continue the series unless my friend brings the next volume to me. I then read Electra by Jennifer Saint which I ended up giving two stars as I said I was really looking forward to a retelling of the Orestea and I was very disappointed because they decided to focus more on the Trojan War and the build-up to the Orestea than the actual events of the Orestea which if you don't know is three plays uh, that talk about Clytemnestra killing Agamemnon and the consequences of that. Electra was not in the story enough. She could have been really interesting because of her motivations in that tragedy and instead it's just her at home waiting for Agamemnon to come home instead of the actual, you know, consequences of what happens in the Orestea. So very, very disappointed. It was just another Trojan War re re retelling. That's really hard to say. So it just fell flat for me when there could have been just an excellent retelling of the Orestea in there and she just decided not to do that. So that was very disappointing. Disappointed. I then listened to The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead on audiobook and I gave that one three stars. Simple thriller. It didn't like really um, amount to anything that I was like upset by. It just was very by the numbers. It didn't um, let me down in any twists and any reveals. It all made sense to me and it all flowed very well. I highly recommend the audiobook since it's a podcast format so that really uh, translates well. And aside from that I don't know if I will seek out any more Ashley Winstead thrillers because they've just been very 
average for me unless she has a book come out with a premise that I am really attracted to. Next I read A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. You know all my thoughts about this already. I said that I gave this two stars in an earlier clip. Now this is another one star because it gave me nothing. It was so rambly like and like no character development even though that was the only thing going on. The world building was ass. You can tell this is just a fan fiction of an pre-existing property so like not a lot is done for the um, world building in itself. Just the idea of a school with no teachers is so like oh my god we are like cool hip teenagers from like 2001 and we don't care about authority. Just bad. And straight washing? Why couldn't this be two boys? Why did it have to be a girl and a boy? What the heck? Next, I decided to torture myself and read The Silent Patient by Alex McKellides, and this thing fell flat for me, one star. The entire book is answering one question, and it does a good job building up to answering that question, and as soon as that question is answered, it all falls apart because there's plot holes now, and there's no motivation for this, and the timing is off, and it just felt like this really stupid idea that he decided to write. And this book is like half like blank pages just to fill up the page count. I feel like this book was only 280 pages and he just decided to make the font bigger and decided to uh, push it as 323 which is a standard publishing page count for a novel. Thank you neighbor for doing your yard work right now when I'm trying to talk. So yeah I'm throwing this book as well as the maidens into my neighborhood little libraries because I don't want these in my house anymore. And finally for the month, my sibling literally dropped this in my lap and said, you need a five star read this month. You've been complaining all month. So um, they're making me read Batman and Robin, the like essential edition. This is volume one called Bad Blood. I'm going to read the um, authors credited. Peter J. Tomasi, Patrick Gleason, and Mick Gray. This is about Damien taking on the role of Robin and them solving a sort of little thing of this villain called Nobody. And while they are dealing with their own relationship and Batman's code of killing because Damien was taught to just kill everyone. He was taught to be an assassin. So now he's unlearning all of that killing mentality with Brucey. And I think that the character development in here was really great. The art style was mostly okay except for a few really really odd panels. And I really enjoyed the character development between these two. It had such good writing in that aspect. And I really liked Alfred. And I really liked that Damien got a dog named Titus. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of Titus in the later volumes. And I'm excited to see what uh, Damien's arc is in the future volumes. So yes, that was another five star um, DC comic. Yep. So that's it. That was my month of August. Really disappointing stuff, but thankfully at the end my sibling came through with another five star. So thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next month. Bye-bye.